What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're doing a book review of No One is Too Small to Make a Difference by Greta Thunberg. This is a very small but extremely powerful book. Um, I was so, so excited to read it. I pre-ordered it on Amazon, uh, just got it, just blasted through it. Uh, for those who don't know, Greta Thunberg, the author of this book, this is a collection of her speeches, is an incredible person who has recently came out of my radar a couple months ago, a climate activist. She was a student in Sweden going to school, um, learning about the climate and just became incredibly passionate about the fact that we weren't doing enough to mitigate climate change and this was a runaway disaster that was going to potentially have a huge impact on her life and so she essentially started skipping school every single Friday to sit outside of the Swedish parliament to protest started basically doing this alone with no one helping her or backing her and it's turned into a global movement she has millions of followers she's given speeches all around the world Um, now there's millions of people who actually are striking for the climate because of this movement she started she has an amazing 11 minute TED talk. I can't recommend it enough for you to watch. And so um, I, I don't know. I've just been really, really inspired by this movement. I mean, hyperchange, a little bit of background for those people watching the channel, is the whole thesis of hyperchange is the world is changing faster than ever. And all of the industries that built us up to get to where we are, that were created during the Industrial Revolution, you know, fossil fuels, factory farming, uh, have basically gone on to create this incredible pollution all across the planet. We're changing the environment more than ever. And we need to hyperchange these business models and essentially the entire way our society works to make it more sustainable. So that's why I do the channel. I'm documenting the companies that I'm investing in that are part of this mission, namely Tesla, who's accelerating the transition to electric vehicles um, and not just electric vehicles, but making our grid greener with batteries and solar to really try and reduce at least one facet of our you know, emissions and pollution problem. And so I am super, super passionate about this entire movement. And I think this is the most important issue that my generation faces. You know, I'm 26 years old. I plan- I want to live to 100 years old. That's 75 more years on this planet. And if we keep going at the current rate, you know, the last p- portion of my life is going to be horrible. W- when you think about what that ha- what that means for my kids or my grandkids, I mean, there's so much on the line with our future and the actions we take today could really change how this future trajectory of, of the world goes. And at least that's my understanding of the science. Back to the book, uh, Greta Thunberg has given, you know, d- dozens of speeches at, at different different events and summits and rallies and this is a collection of her speeches uh in chronological order i mean they're really it's a little bit repetitive a lot of the speeches are very similar but i think it's so so powerful like i almost cried a couple times reading this book i'm not gonna lie because it's just so like I think it's so easy to get caught up in groupthink about like, oh, well, everybody's doing this. This is the way society has always worked. It'll just continue working that way. That I think once you realize the dire street of the situation of climate change, how fast we need to act to be able to hit the Paris Accords to stop global warming above uh, below two degrees Celsius so that we don't have this runaway effect um, and we don't know what will happen. I mean, it, there's just it's so, so important that we act now. And so Greta Thunberg's entire, you know, thing is like, I want you to panic. I want you to act like your house is on fire. Like we, we need to panic. We need to take radical change in, in so many different ways to start addressing this climate solution. And so, you know, her plan is to continue protesting at the Swedish parliament every single Friday, skipping school until Sweden is on track to meet its part of the Paris Agreement, uh, you know, requirements. And what's so, and I just want to read one part of the book that is so, so fascinating to me because she's explaining, you know, uh, I think, you know, why do a school strike? Because basically it's showing them that, you know, what's the point of learning all this knowledge for our future if we don't even have a future because the climate and the planet is destroyed? And so, and what is the point of learning facts within the school system when the most important facts given by the finest science of that same school system clearly mean nothing to our politicians and society? And this is, I mean, I'm just going to keep reading it because it's so, so powerful. A lot of people say that Sweden is just a small country and that it doesn't matter what we do. But I think that if a few children can get headlines all over the world by not going to school for a few weeks, imagine what we could all do together if we wanted. Today we use 100 million barrels of oil every day. There are no politics to change that. There are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. So we can't save the world by playing by the rules because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change and it has to start today. So everyone out there, it is now it is now time for civil disobedience. It is now time to rebel. 
So that's kind of the tone of a lot of her speeches, which is trying to inspire radical action for politicians, for business leaders, for people like that. And so, I don't know, I just think this book is is just a piece in an incredibly huge movement that is just getting started, that's only going to get more relevant, that needs to happen, um, that is so, so inspiring. It makes me so, so happy that there is someone like Greta Thunberg who's leading the movement, who's putting out her ideas. I think she said all of the proceeds of this book go to charity. Anyway, so... Ratings on this book, I have to give it a 5 out of 5. It's so, so important. I think this is going to go down as an extremely important book in, in the whole history of this climate change movement. And I think you got to check it out if you're a believer, if you're not a believer, if you just want to learn about it, if you want to figure out what's happening, figure out why people are so motivated and inspired, then I think you should definitely uh, pick up a copy of this book. I'll put a link in the description. Greta Thunberg, no one is too small to make a difference. I love the little product and how it's so small as well. It's 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 really, really well done. And so I've given a lot of thought to this, you know, what do we actually do to save the climate problem? You know, is it enough to invest in Tesla? Is it enough to vote for the right politicians? Is it enough to just march and, and get people woke about it, which is what Greta Thunberg's doing? I mean, there's, I, I don't know, but I this book really started making me personally think about, okay, how can I A, change what I'm doing in my life? You know, how can I use less plastic? I got a water bottle, which is awesome. And now I, I never buy water bottles from the airport anymore. Now I don't have to use plastic cups because that sounds like a really tiny example, but I've just started to think about the negative externalities and the life cycle of everything I use. So right there, I'm looking at mint Milano's that I bought. Okay, well, what's up with that paper packaging on the mint Milano's? What's up with the little, you know, wax paper in the w packaging? You know, what's going to happen to that after I eat my cookies? So every time I eat a box of Milano's there's like this little ball of paper waste that has to be created and disposed of as well like there's just it's so embedded in our life all this sort of single use mentality this never thinking about negative externalities never thinking about the natural environment I mean I've traveled so many places in the world and the most common theme that I can think of among any place on planet earth where humans live is trash and pollution that's the most that's the most ubiquitous thing that we leave I mean there's literally a pile of trash floating and building in the ocean like it's it's so far beyond even just like the warming and the science part. I mean, to me, it's really just a shame to see like I'm in Man Manhattan, you know, New York City, like America. This should be like the forefront of society of the world of culture today. And I could walk right down there to the East River and there's garbage everywhere. There's pollution everywhere. There's plastic everywhere. No one cares. No one's changing how they interact with the world, even though the evidence of our destruction and sort of like obsessive consumer materialism culture is everywhere and nobody cares. And so, I don't know, this personally made me think it, it's kind of like equally inspiring and equally scary about what do we do next? You know, I feel kind of powerless in a lot of ways, but I think this is the start of a really exciting movement. And I guess if Greta Thunberg, if I had a second to talk to her or some way to inspire conversation, one thing that she always says is like, we already know what we need to do. You know, it's just about waking up to the fact. And I think, yes, in some ways we know what we need to do. Reduce reduce emissions like this, stop using oil, get off fossil fuels, stop using single use plastic, all this stuff. But I think like plans, like real concrete plans, you know, I think business models is the best way to instill change in societies to create a for-profit entity that can actually sustain itself with a good mission like Tesla. I think Tesla is doing more than any charity ever will for climate change in terms of actually getting carbon, you know, stopping carbon from being emitted. I think, you know, the Tesla business model wins. So I guess that's kind of where I want to see Greta Thunberg's next step go. It's like, let's start having an open dialogue with politicians. They, you know, this should be a debate where we have on live TV the smartest scientists on the world with the smartest politicians, with the activists, with the CEOs of oil companies, all having like a debate about what we do about this. Because I think it's just like nobody's talking about it. It's not the forefront of politics. I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing here. But I, I, I think that's the biggest like feeling that I, I got after reading this book. It's like, okay, what's next? I accept that the problem's happening. I think a lot of people that are my age do, but it's like, how do, who do we vote for to solve it? Where do we put our money to actually really fight this? And, you know, I personally think buying Tesla products and investing in companies who are run the right way, pricing in their negative externalities, trying to reduce their footprint is the best way you can do it is vote with your wallet, I think is way more powerful than voting with politicians um, personally. But I think we have to do more than that. There's got to be some next step. And so I don't know. I'm, I have no answers. And I'm just trying to think outside 
outside the box, but this book, I, I, anyway, I guess that's <laughs> my point of this video. I hope that kind of made sense. It's just that this book will really inspire you to think about what is happening, to think about how humans are changing the planet, to think, to realize that young people who are actually going to be alive when this happens, not the old politicians who've been there forever, not the president. The point being like everyone else is going to be dead. Like I was arguing with my dad about this and like he literally, they just don't care because they're just not going to live through it. And I genuinely think that is the biggest part of the climate problem. And Greta Thunberg has a super inspiring thing where she says like all the people who this matters towards in Sweden or Europe, wherever she is, like can't vote. I, she's 16. She can't even vote for th her future. And so, but the, all the people that care are the people that can't vote. So I just think there's a huge disconnect in a, the incentives for politicians and business people to not care about this and they want to ignore the science. It's so much easier to go with the status quo than be radical and propose big change. Um, there's just so much that has to happen. This is such an uphill battle, but I, but I think you could do your part by educating yourself, by starting the movement, by getting this book. Um, anyway, this is hyper change. That's my book review, Greta Thunberg. This is, a, this is, I feel like it's so much bigger than a book in reality. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.